recording and already Matt's just been um, giving me stick about my my podcast setup here. Let me just bring that mic in a bit closer. So yeah, the picture on the wall behind me is Tom Blake. And you are, yeah. Well, I thought it was Tom Carroll. You got this, uh, these big wood surfboards behind you. It looks like you. Yeah. Got the no, it was stuff. taken in Hawaii in 1928, that photograph. Oh, were you there? Believe it or not. No, but <laughs> it's, it, 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 Linda actually brought, brought it in when we moved in together. This, this big picture came in and, um, and we've hung it up everywhere and I love it. I actually, I actually, Give him a nod every every day I come in to do a podcast. When I sage the room, I actually blow sage to him and welcome his energy. And he looks so happy and content in that photo. It's yeah. like he's as free as you could ever be. So I just, I really enjoy it. There you go. I, I'll have to look him up. If there's anyone listening to this who knows of a surfer called Tom Blake in 1928. Well, they have a picture like that. He must have some story behind him. He must be some legend. I think so. He looks like a legend. He does. He's, he's, he's ripped yeah. like a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that just uh, drops into the whole theme of today, like freedom and, and travel, doesn't it? It does. That, <laughs> that picture makes me think of these things. It's like, wow, you know, hence why I live in Yamba. Yeah. You know, surrounded by 13 beaches, I just don't surf enough. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You know, but yeah, we wanted to record a podcast. One, mate, I, I can't tell you how many emails and Instagram posts I'm getting off people constantly. Where's Matt? Where's Matt? No. He's never on the podcast anymore. <laughs> They're like, thank God that guy's not on there waffling about who knows what. You know, it's a tall order, mate, because some of the guests I've had on at the moment and the conversations have been blowing my mind. Right. You know? It's insane. You're going next level. I'm, in, I'm inspired yeah. just watching. But, uh, you know, you know, busy lives is, if, believe it or not, it's really hard for us to pin the time down to actually do, do a podcast. Well, pin a time. It's also the location, which is part of the reason I was giving you hell for your backdrop there, mate. Because we've tried how many times to do this at one of our weekend workshops, right? Yeah, exactly. Whether it's the, the lighting's off or there's a Nazi uh, manager at the space that doesn't let us actually... Record. Be more than an hour of what we paid for. <laughs> I know. If people only could see the workings, uh, the inner mechanics of the, the workshop being set up. That's you right. Know, getting well, here there. we are. Yeah. And we wanted to speak about, because obviously um, we're running a retreat in Portugal this year. And this is my first time to leave Australia since the lockdowns. And Same. I'm getting very excited. Like right. airplane tickets are booked. I know. Accommodations are starting to get booked. Things are lining up. Oh, you're and, a step um, ahead of me. I, I guess I should find a place to stay while I'm over there. I thought I'd just get there and just let it roll. Um, even better. Even better. <laughs> but you're going on your own. See, I'm going with a wife and a child. And th that's true. interesting because I, I, I would th often think about because naturally we want to talk about the benefits of travel and how it can for spiritual growth, soul growth, mental, emotional, everything, right? I mean, I, I know when we look back upon our lives, I have some of the, my, my fondest memories of the, the travel and the adventures, the challenges and everything that come across. But it's interesting you say that because I've been wanting to lean back into that full surrender, but my, my mental aspect around it has changed now that I have deeper responsibilities with a two and a half year old that I'm taking traveling. Cause I used to just get on a plane yeah. and not even, with a backpack and just turn up and, and see what happens. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure if they'll let me get away with that now. <laughs> well, you might get more mileage with a crying baby on your hip, mate. So this is true, right? This is true. <laughs> <laughs> People will take you off the street, say, help this poor family out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would lean, I'd lean heavily into my Welsh accent, you know, if I was trying to, Trying to yeah. get a, well, a room or something. I, these days I don't get very far with an American accent, so I, they want to just like <laughs> kick me to the curb. But uh, back in the day, it was all right. I do have my my tickets. I've I've got a hard copy of the tickets of the, in this day and age. Can you imagine? Um, wow. Sitting by my on my bedside table, and every morning I just I catch a glance gl glimpse of that. And I'm like, oh, it's just because, like you said, I haven't been out of the country for what three years now, two two three mm -hmm. years. Longest that I've been in one place probably since I was 18. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. 
yeah, it's exciting. It has this sense of freedom and it's like, wow, let's, let's go. What's next? What opportunities? Exactly. Wait? You know? Well, let's talk about then. We thought we'd reminisce a little bit on our individualized journeys about travel. And there's been moments I have no doubt you can reflect upon that have, you know, have been defining moments in, in life, really. I mean, I can, I can think of many that have actually supported the, tra the trajectory that I'm now on, you know? So do you want to start? My phone was ringing. I'm just making sure it's on silent. There you go. <laughs> oh, was that like a, a, a vague constructed question? I thought it was were... a question. <laughs> so to sh sh share a moment with us, something that... <laughs> Right, so many things come to mind because as you're talking, I'm just like, wow, my whole my whole life. If I if I didn't have access to travel and to, to different experiences outside of the, you know, <clears throat> cornfields, pickup trucks, and you know, shotgun Midwest lifestyle that I I lived in as a, as a child, as a teen, I wouldn't be doing this work. I wouldn't have access to these things that actually light me up and set my soul on fire. You know, it's like, wow, like. Because I, I had to leave Indiana, I, I cruised across the states to Los Angeles of all places, and then bounced around California before I settled into uh, sleeping on a on a, a couch on the on the veranda of my mate's uh, apartment, um, overlooking the uh, Redondo Beach Pier, listening to seals barking and waves crashing as I fell asleep every night, and that was for three months as I started to find my feet and get my life together, and it's like that that initial experience of getting out of the everyday and my lifestyle that I knew it was so familiar to me, then opened my mind and my life to so many other possibilities and so many other experiences. And from there, it started to lead into, wow, what, what creative spiritual experiences can I have outside of mm. the, the box of what I know? I do have a question for you that's popping in there. Like, because... Sure Reflecting back, as when, when we're younger, we tend to be a bit more gung, gung ho, don't you know, a bit more fearless, don't think things through. And I've even seen now when we talk about Portugal or people, because generally our demographic that comes of above 40, so 40, you know, 50s and 70s, 60s, and some even in their 70s, right? Yeah, and we get like it's almost like we we lose that that essence of that that youth you know what i mean that that just you used to trickle through to a degree but and i say this because i ponder on these things i'm like wow am i being a, just an older fuddy daddy in the way i'm looking you know and making sure all the ducks are in line or am i still being that free-spirited guy and allowing for the growth to happen and just be aware of the, the things that arise when we look to make these decisions and lean into those aspects. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Where, where are you at right now when it comes to these things? Cause I know you were, you were very gung ho, mate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's still in, in me, your mate. approach. <clears throat> <I'm>, <clears throat> well, I know. I, I see the way you bloody just rock up, at the, you know, <laughs> when we're traveling a couple of hundred Ks, mate. I know. Yeah. It's all disarray, isn't it? But it's um, I I I wonder that too. Am I? And I, actually, that's one of the things with the work, isn't it? That I just kind of, I just like to blow things up and then then put the pieces back together, because I I get uncomfortable being comfortable. And I think that's, uh, I, I think that a lot of people are the other way around. And um, and I think that that's also been one of my gifts is this ability to just kind of leap into the unknown and see what happens. Like, I just get so excited when, I, when plans fall apart and it's like, well, what, what's next? I freak out. Like I'm, <laughs> you see me in the retreats. I love the chairs in a certain order, but then to actually I'm, that have that space to be like, well, wait, the chairs are all mixed up. How can I be, how can I find order in this disarray in this disorder? And so the kids, the kid, I think there's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword though, isn't it? Because I know that with my kids coming in, I'm quite tethered now to them, right? As you would be. And so they've created a sense of stability and, and a sense of grounding in my life that I never had before. And I think that grounding 
has allowed me to then actually um, form a foundation that allows me then to travel and experience things further than before where I was just kind of a, a leaf in the wind and nothing this really is true landing you know yeah and so I think it's and I see this in a lot of wayward spirits that I you know meet along my journeys of doing this type of work is that people will get so far off the planet and just really be striving to have these experiences but they don't ground it into the form into physical into their lives into practical um, uses and I think then then it's like that's the other extreme they're missing it whereas you know a lot of people get really anchored in and grounded and then they're the malleability of, of who they are and who they could be becomes rigid and they then they don't have this capacity to start to make the changes that become often a distant memory for them of these childhood like dreams and 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 desires and it's like we just we become resigned to this rigid structure that we actually have created for ourselves you know I don't know. What do, what do you think? I'm just going, I'm going, mate. I'm, you get, yeah, no, a thousand percent. It breaks patterns. Travel breaks patterns. Like if you, if you like, we get certain rights. But a couple of things I, I feel as well sometimes that we get so comfortable. We are actually uncomfortable, but we haven't identified it as discomfort. And, and then it manifests in many areas of in our life. It's just we haven't been able to uh, become aware enough of certain things or why we do certain things and question the fundamental reasonings behind the things we do, what we do. And yet, yeah, I think it's the boiling frog syndrome then. You yeah, know, where 100%. you put, put, put the frog in the saucepan and we just, oh, it's warm, it's comfortable, you know, and then, there's, but there's a point where it's <laughs> why, like, why is my skin falling off? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah. if we, of course, exposed to the sharp pain instantly, we, we will jump right out of that water as opposed to just boil away in it. So I'm very aware of that. And I think, you know, being able to reflect upon many travel experiences is has been a great way to anchor that in, to stay self-motivated in terms of knowing when you need to shake it up and, and do some travel. I mean, we had this Portugal retreat actually booked in 2020, didn't we? April 2020. And then yeah. the world just started locking down in we planned that very well. much. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <clears throat> and, um, and you know, Enrique uh, and Verena, you know, the beautiful souls that all the ret uh, own the retreat center in Portugal, you know, we've been worked with them ever since. We're like, like hold the deposit, we're coming. Like, it's actually been a, one of these things where, no, it's happening. You know, even if it was locked down for 10 years, we're coming kind of mm -hmm. thing. So coming back into that, it's nice to be able to reflect upon that. You know, it's interesting as well in my own journey, travel was escapism for me for a while, you know, yeah, when exactly. I was younger. Yeah, it, it was avoiding the very things that I needed to address. But at the time, I didn't understand, I didn't know how to articulate that or understand it. I hadn't been given any guidance or mentoring of people that had the experience who had gone through everything that I was going through. So it was almost like you're fumbling around in the dark until you finally stumble across something and that let, let a bit of light in, you know, um, which in reflection, a lot of growth still came from that, but it was challenging because I knew deep in my heart I was running yeah. away from the very things I wanted to address, you know, but, um, you know, what difference does that make for today? I guess the fact is, Leaning in older and wiser, well, you could say a little wiser. Um, it's like fine wine. You get to appreciate it more, I think. I think I'll, I'll go into these adventures really wanting to absorb the 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 things and the adventures and the, the unknown that will come our way through that time. And ideally see everything as an opportunity for that growth going to a different country that's a foreign language that they can't speak like we're going to spend a couple of days in tokyo and on the way over and part of my brain's like oh my god they're all going to be speaking japanese how am i going to you know how am i going to get from a to b what am i going to do am I gonna, you know am I, you know the, the the monkey and the other part's like guy you've traveled like 
how many countries have you been to? How many foreign countries have you been to? Why is it any different now? You might be a bit rusty. So I get excited then by leaning into those smaller challenges to allow me to shake up the patterns that, that I'm living on a daily basis. As you've spoke about different things, you know, the one that I always love is the Camino. And when you did that, or yeah. why did you end up going? That was a pivotal point in your life. The fact that you lent in, the yeah. people you met, the things you did. Yeah, well, the Camino is a, is a trek across Spain, basically. And it's just a pilgrimage that people have done for for many years. Um, and I, I had no idea about it until I was uh, turning 30. And <laughs> being 50 now, I'm like, God, why was I so worked up about turning 30 and feeling like that was old? <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was a pivotal point for me. I'm like, wow, I'm over the hill now. I'm 30. And I thought, well, I want to meet that milestone with, um, with something new, a new, a new way of looking at things. I, I was um, yeah, doing massage work in, in Los Angeles and catering to um, the rich and famous. And um, it was like, it, it was, it was rewarding in one way, but it was also uh, exhausting and, and not fulfilling. And so I'm like, well, what else is there? There must be something beyond the the, the hype of Hollywood, and um, and so that started my my curiosity, and I was just started to lean into then more spiritual travel and what it, what can I do? What what's out there? And uh, Saint Francis really appealed to me as somebody to connect with and go to Assisi in in, in Italy, and so that was my initial plan. I'm going to go to Rome for my thirtieth. Um, spend some time there and find my way up to CC and have like a few days and um, a, a typical American traveler. Let me, let me just take a weekend <laughs> and see seven countries. Um, so, but in that moment, it's like, this is the beauty of travel. This is the beauty of actually setting an intention, setting, setting yourself to, to find more beyond what you know and to explore and to, to see the vastness of this world. And, and so it was like in that moment, I all of a sudden, Shirley MacLaine's book um, on the Camino fell into my lap. And as I was planning this trip to Rome and reading her book cover to cover in like two days, I was just consumed by it. And it just inspired this seed of opportunity. I was like, wow, I could actually walk the Camino if I extend my trip a little bit and go from Rome over to Spain and then start walking. And I figured it's going to take me two months to get all this in. And at that point in my life, just being a massage therapist, I wasn't really financially secure. And it was a bit of a stretch to get a week off. But within a day of reading that book and having that idea that I want to try walk the Camino, my uh, roommate came to me and says, hey, I'm moving out. You're going to have to leave. <laughs> I'm like, what? And that, that sparked the idea. Well, then I don't have to pay rent while I'm away. So I checked out of the, um, moved everything into a few bags, left the remaining stuff at a friend's house, had two months free rent open up. So that allowed me to pay for the trip. I was able to change my tickets mm -hmm. and away I went. And I spent like 40, 40 to 50 days of that two months was walking. And huh. it's, the amount of insights I dreamed every night on that trek and those dreams actually correlated to like historical events. And I, I, I believe it was past life things that were coming into focus for me and it ignited all kinds of different things. I met some incredible people that I walked with and started to learn more about healing, more about spirituality, more about myself. And I, I come out of that. I was fit as a fiddle. <laughs> after walking 40 K's a day for, for a month and a half. And the insights that I had, the inspiration that was there, the direction that my life took from that point on was like a 180, completely different. And I never would have got there if I didn't say, Hey, I want to leave this comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I want to leave what I'm familiar with and see what else is out there. And it's like, then the universe met me. And it revealed to me what I was searching for, but didn't know what it was and didn't have access to from the vantage point that I was sitting in, in my everyday life in LA. So, yeah.
It's huge, isn't it? Like the key points that are getting out of your comfort zone, but having an intention behind it, like you, it's like taking that inspired action. That's it. To and then once you once you're in, you're in. That's the thing. And you, like you always say, you can't be half pregnant, right? You're you're like, and and but sadly, as human behavior, and I've been guilty of this in the past, is that we. We love the idea of doing something. We daydream about the idea or something, but we allow and we allow the mind to create reasoning and rationalizing and, and we impose upon all our past experiences upon that, which then cuts off any kind of new possibility or opening to just to, to lean into, into that unknown. And I think like how many, how many people have you spoke to us? Oh, I'd love to come to Portugal, but I can't because of this or that or, or whatever. And I think, wow, imagine, and you can see they love the work. They love the, the idea of being, coming to a new country, love the idea of meeting all these beautiful souls, but yet we don't allow ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the thing that frustrates me about human behavior is like, we, we live like every day is a given mm -hmm. and, yeah. and life is, that's it. infinite <laughs> but the thing like nothing's going to change unless you change the way you do things like it's just like we have this i want to change i want to transform and like oh yeah same coffee same job same relationship same story same sob story same pain point yeah. over and over everything again. we don't shake it up no, the, and I, there's nothing go on yeah. well no. you, I, when you said that like we we act like oh tomorrow is just given like Oh yeah, maybe not today, but next week or next year or maybe five years from now. And we just like assume that every day is given. I saw this thing on um, Insta the other day, and this dude was saying, "If I was to give you um, ten million dollars, like, would you take it? Would you take ten million dollars? Would that help you? Would that be good? Right? And of course, you're gonna say, "Yeah, I'll take ten million. Yeah, no, like that'd be incredible. That would change my life. Like that's so valuable to me, right?" And then he says, well, if I gave you that 10 million, but you're not going to wake up tomorrow, would you still take it? And it's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, how valuable is my life and these every days that I have compared to that, you know, 10 million mark. Mm. And it's like that, that kind of, so we should be waking up every day saying, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, a, I'm alive. I've got another day. What can I do today? Because I don't know if I'm going to have tomorrow. It's worth more than $10 million today. This right. moment. And we see it often. Think of people that come in to our workshops and retreats that have had the diagnosis. They've had the, oh. the scent that almost like the, the wish, the death, what is it? The death bone or whatever been pointed at them from saying, you've only got X amount to live or this and that. And, and then the, Upon reflection, I mean, I used to work with people with cancer. I used to see it a lot, and it's. I think that was one of my huge realizations in life to get out of my own story in my mm. early thirties. Was like, wow, like health is true wealth, and and the, the life that we have is yeah, it's not a given, you know. I think, um, but we procrastinate. I I'll never forget going off on a different tangent, but why. In, where inspired action comes from me, me and what I enjoy doing back in 2015 what's that eight years ago now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go time's flying right yeah. eight years ago I um I had Wim Hof on the podcast and oh. I think I think I was the first one in Australia to have him on a podcast. It was literally just been on Joe Rogan. I think he was just about to take off. Nobody had really, it wasn't, you know, he wasn't like this household kind of name speaking yeah. to opera, Oprah, whatever he's done since or whatever. And at the end of the podcast and I, at the end of the podcast, he goes, Oh, I'm coming to Australia soon, you know, to run a retreat. Mm. And I was like, huh, maybe I should come to that, you know? And then it sat with me. So I started flirting with ice baths, right? Yeah. And just doing it. But the thought was terrifying. There was a part of me that was like, oh, I want to get so excited about this. I understand all the health benefits. I want to do it. I've been dabbling with cold showers for a couple of years after the back of Tim Ferriss and his four-hour four hour body book. And But I'd never like taken any of this kind of that seriously. 
Mm. You know, and then the moment I booked in for his retreat, everything changed. <laughs> like it was like it's three months away. I, I and it wasn't cheap. You know, I, I parted with a bit of coin to do it, but at the same time, I didn't mind that because it's like, well, are you serious about this, or are you just gonna be procrastinate? You know, it's just another thing, another one day. So I booked myself in and mate. The change within those three months within me, because I knew what was coming, was phenomenal. I, the first thing I did, and I got it wrong because obviously I got a big chest freezer now. I bought a little chest freezer and I bought these um, big Tupperware containers. So my idea was was to make these five liter blocks of ice out of Tupperwares, right? <laughs> it, it didn't occur to me at the time to actually convert a freezer into the ice bath. I don't think you've even seen them. <laughs> So I'd be go filling these bloody ice buckets up and then I'd be going up there and, and bathing twice a week. And I thought, yeah, I'm the man I'm getting. And then I bought a thermometer and realized it was only 10 degrees. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is getting there. But, um, but the point was, I guess the point of the story was, is that once I'd made the, the commitment, I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'm not fence sitting anymore. Um, everything shifted. And, and I look back with such fond memories upon that time of just the playfulness and me getting it completely wrong and, and leaning into that unknown was, was, was a highlight. And the other thing that came out of that was the, the people that I spent the five days with going through something together. And that's what I'm so proud of, of what we create at the retreats, mm. because I could still come. Now, you, you know, many of those people are still some of my closest friends today, even though I might not speak to them that often or catch up, they're always there. You know, I'm actually be visiting one of them in Montenegro when, when we fly over. That's right. Yeah. Cause he, he's over there and that's where I met, <coughs> met Dave on, on the, on the Wim retreat. You know what I mean? So, so I think there's all these hidden factors that we, we actually don't allow ourselves to lean into and feel and absorb to, create that that excitement in our life because what do they say if you're not excited and terrified at the same time you're missing the mark mm. you, you kind of want both you know yeah yeah well because so. that terrifying experience is, is an indication you're moving out of your comfort zone exactly right exactly and, and that's yeah. the only place you can find growth is outside essence of our work surrender is a big component of it and I think if you're willing to surrender and become more, because it makes you, it forces you to become more present mm. for a start. When you, the, the moment you leave, you, 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 you very, become very conscious of everything, your surroundings, your actions, your interactions with people. You, you become the, um, the insignificant stranger on the street compared to the insignificant stranger that you might walk past a hundred times on your mm. way to work every single day. And the roles get reversed in some respects. You're the person that's out of there and you know, and we then get an opportunity to shift our perspective, to look, can we look at these as opportunities instead of um, obstacles? Yes. You know, there's, there's these, these fine moments and all I, all I want to, I guess the other thing I want to say in it, like, is that if you start to lean into surrender, start to lean into the, the very fact that we create a resilience within ourselves, no matter what the external world is doing, we can then start to continue to develop that in there. Because, I mean, look how many people travel at the end of the day, a lot. You know, we end up in our little bubbles. You, got, you know, I don't watch TV, but I go in many houses around you that do, and you kind of get sucked into this vacuum vortex of, of one lens of what you think the world really is. Mm or how it's been portrayed in some respects. And and by getting out and moving around and being somewhere else, it, it just shifts all of that. Yeah, but not, you, not only just getting out and moving around, because I know a lot of people travel, but many people will travel. It's almost like those people that will have these RVs that are like the size of their house, and then they just get <laughs> everything that distracts them and that they're attached to, and they put it in an RV, and then they just move their chaotic you know, disaligned, misaligned life to a field <laughs> and then plug into a socket there so they can get Wi-Fi and all the other stuff and Netflix and still have the same experience, but just in a different location. It's like, well, can you surrender the, the distractions and the things that you hold on to? Because it's like at the end of the day, we, we do hold so much 
You know, we, we do have so much in our hands. It's like responsibilities, the to do's, the, the crutches, you know, the addictions, the, the sugars, the processed food, the Netflix, the uh, Facebook, the, you know, the list can go on and on and on about all these things that we use to distract ourselves and not actually look within and what's going on. And that's then what we hold in our hands, right? So if we have all that that we're holding in our hands, how are we ever going to pick anything else up? Mm -hmm. How are we ever going to be able to grab and, and take hold of something new and something, something different? We can't. We got to actually put all that stuff down, and then we have open hands, and that's where the surrender comes in. I'm, I'm, I'm open, and it's like you, you, you lent into this that concept of like, well, then you become the stranger on the street, and you're seeking connection and 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 the resourcefulness just goes through the roof the the opportunities go through the roof the the insights the inspiration again all that just rises because you're wide open to possibility and and the awe and wonder of what life is going to reveal to you and we say that all the time in in the work it's like you know, people come in into the, the retreats, we see it all the time, but they're just closed off and they're like in their little bubble and they're like on guard. And it's like, well, who are these strangers? And it's like, well, wait a minute. They're just here exploring too. And what beauty and what wisdom do they have to offer to me? And I think when I travel and I, and I start to experience that, and I, I oftentimes when I'm in that unknown and like, you know, like you say, just a backpack and let's, let's see where I land tonight. It's like, then you open yourself up to having to rely or having to be vulnerable to other people. And like, and it's like, wow, what? And then in that, the synchronicities align and you meet this person that has the exact perception or opportunity or for your, your night, for your experience, for your journey. And it's like, that's just a microcosm of what's possible in life. And I always find myself come back from these trips and like, I can even remember like coming back from walking the Camino and I'm back in LA where everyone's just like, Phew, you know, oh. <laughs> closed off. Don't and I'm like, hey, that. how you going? <laughs> and talking to the guy making the coffee, talking to, you know, somebody on the street and like, and they're just, they're stunned. What are you talking to me? Like, and, but it's like, you're that open. And, and, it, and in that, I, I made some beautiful connections, new friends, new opportunities, New, new business opportunities and things reveal themselves as I was in the everyday life with that openness from the experience of getting out of my, of my own comfort zone. Isn't that the truth? It's like, wow, it's all right there. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm reminiscing because this is why I'm getting so excited. Because I remember doing a shamanic journey in England. Mm. And then we came out of that caught the trade like I slept there the night then and came out of that the next morning. And there were three of us. We all used to live together. And we're like, let's go. Where's the warmest place in Europe right now? <laughs> and, and we pulled it up on the TV, on the teletext. And, uh, and it was Dubrovnik in Croatia. And that was Sunday morning. And we caught a flight Monday morning. We said, like, let's go to Dubrovnik. And what we didn't know was that it was peak, peak time to go to Dubrovnik, right. apparently. Right, you know, and apparently all the the ferries come in, and like forty thousand visitors just in, just pour in wow. off the boat, like every day. Well, like cruise Dubrovnik ships and stuff, cruise ships and that, yeah, yeah, wow. in the old town, right? So it, all of us by nine o'clock, it's like rammed. It's just bodies everywhere, and we'd rocked up, but I was so open, I was so in the moment. We we didn't have accommodation. We didn't have like I had had any clothes with me I just rocked up and um and we and the next thing you know we we got talking to um someone that was working on the kayak tourist because they were trying to sell us a kayak but instead of going oh another tout go away we started chatting and then she got on the phone to someone then the radio and then this 70 odd year old woman came down she's like are you crazy you come to Dubrovnik with no accommodations you know she's giving us she's like telling us off and she's like, and then she gets on the radio and she's like, oh, would you believe it? I've got you a room. Now you can have this room and normally charge this much, but you can have it for this much. And, they said, and it was like 90 bucks a day or something. It was ridiculously cheap, but it was smack bang in the old town. Mm. And, and then the next thing, as she's walking us up there, she's like, oh, 
I'm making, what are you going to eat tonight? Have you got food with you? And we're like, no. She said, I'll make you some, I'll get you some fresh fish. And, and then the next thing you know, she's given us a room. And a couple of hours later, she's brought fresh fish, vegetables, and she cooks us a meal, mate. Wow. In this place, like th three, three lads just getting off. And we're like, this is ridiculous. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and I remember we were telling some Germans that night we all went out and had a, a, a meal and a couple of wines and stuff. And we got chatting to some locals. They couldn't believe what had happened because apparently they'd been looking for months and just trying to book this and book that and, and everything. And it turned out to be an incredible week in Dubrovnik mm. by basically surrendering to possibility. You yeah, know? you couldn't have planned it better. You couldn't plan it. Yeah. You just couldn't. Like if you, if the logical brain, if you give it a sniff, it would have shut all that possibility down completely. That's, it. <laughs> that's what we do every day, and that it's it's that every exact moment. thing, exact that that exact thing that we that gets in our way of the life that's wanting to meet us. Exactly. It's, oh, I can't go. I don't have the time. All the kids. All the money. All work. All this. All that. All my hip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get over it's yourself and get on with exactly. life. Jeez. Yeah. 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 So anyway, to, to bring the podcast to a close, I'm, I'm genuinely cannot wait to, to lean into this, this adventure. And the one thing that fills me up no end as well is not only are we doing our first retreat in Europe, obviously, because Petra's from Croatia and it's our turn to get over there. But, um, so not with all the, my own travel and, and uh, taking Ava for the first time aside as well, um, is bringing people together to do this work. Mm. And it's going to be an incredible experience because everyone's going to be traveling from all over the world, from all different nations, from, you know, different yeah. cultures, different people. And A ha handful of people that we know from our online programs, like we've yes. done it for years. And yes. they, they finally can come in and like meet us in person. They're just over the moon. I know so it's we. incredible. <laughs> it's so we, you know, and to bring a body of people together like that, mm -hmm. that that oh, doesn't matter how much money you earn, what you do, what culture you're from, whatever it is, you know, we get beyond all that nonsense and really connect back to the heart and soul of of what it means to be human and, and hold a space. And the the every time what comes out of that blows my mind. So to be doing this in Portugal, which I've never been to Portugal mm. as well. So, you know, it's why, why wouldn't you want to do that and get excited? Mm. Any words of wisdom to finish, mate? You said a few today. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've tapped out, son. Done. I'm just excited. I don't. I. I. Yeah. I. I can't understand why. Well, I can't understand. I mean, we're all. We all have our reasons. We all have, you know, responsibilities. We all have of stuff course. going on. It's like, but I look back on my life and I'm like, I wouldn't be where I am today doing the things that really make my heart sing. If I hadn't have just stepped out and then stepped out again. And like traveled and met new people and experienced different cultures. And I mean, to me, being an American, it was like, what? There's there's another planet besides planet America. <laughs> <laughs> and in that awakening, I've met some beautiful souls in some of the most poverty stricken places in the world that are more happy and more fulfilled in their lives than some of the richest people that I've met. And it's like it brings things perspective and it brings a richness to life that many people will never have the opportunity to experience. And man, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And I'm so yeah. excited that we get to open that passport up again and, mm. and, and meet some new people and have some new experiences. So yeah, I'd love, love everyone to join us. It's going to exactly. be incredible. Yeah. Well, if you feel like a, you're a stagnant stone, just cover it with moss growing all over it and you're ready to shake things up. <laughs> A stagnant stone. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Somebody said that to me once in Thailand. It's like everyone around you is like stagnant stones covered in moss. They just get caught up in it all. You got to shake it off and roll around. I was like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> That's it, mate. I'm not going to be a stagnant stone for the next 50 years of my life. We're going to start rolling. Totally. Exactly. Sweet. Yeah. Not only will you get to travel on the adventures, you'll have the adventure of a lifetime with us at the retreat as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, links will be in the show notes if you join us. Let us know. Reach out if you come in. Amazing. We're excited. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Yeah. Great to have you back on the show, mate. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how excited I've been. <laughs> I've, been, I've been suffering withdrawals, having shakes and stuff, haven't been on the camera. It's just really painful. I, I, I'm sure you lost sleep last last <laughs> night knowing that you're coming on today. No, I'll see you in a couple of weeks in uh, Newcastle, mate. Okay. Yeah, man. Sweet. Thanks, Legend. See you, mate.